What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So there are a lot of new Tesla buyers out there, prospects, current customers, and also those that have a current Tesla looking to add to their fleet and possibly get a second vehicle that are going to be wondering what is the best option to use for home charging. Uh, now that Tesla made the mobile connector an add-on accessory instead of coming with it, which we still don't agree with, but we'll talk about that in a second, it does make you need to pause and think what is more beneficial for your use case. There is a lot to do and a lot to think about with the two options here being a wall connector that is almost a little over double the price of the mobile connector, the mobile connector being $230, the wall connector being $475, I believe. Um, that is a substantial difference, and it's really going to come down to your use case, which is more beneficial. We'll talk about all this and more. I want to go ahead and hop in our garage and show you the two options because we do have both installed and what might be more beneficial to you. It's going to be based on vehicle, use cases, and obviously cost preferences. Let's go ahead and start on this. All right, as you guys can see, we're in our garage now, and the first call out is just how clean the Tesla wall connector looks. This baby is even customizable. You can get different color face plates to match your vehicle color if you want. It just looks much more elegant and a cleaner solution than what we're about to discuss, the mobile connector. So we'll talk more about this wall connector in a second, but this baby right here is what I think a lot of people are gonna opt in for just because it might be their first vehicle or you might have a standard range Model 3 Certain models do only charge at a max capacity of, I think it's 32 amps, that this pushes out and that this will push out that the vehicle can take. If you're using a Model Y, Model S, Model X, they can take 48 amps of input to charge, which means faster charging speeds, basically. But this baby right here is actually a two-in-one or a multiple solution built in one because the actual charging port is removable for the input for the charge. So this is a NEMA 1450 adapter that uses, basically a dryer uses stuff like this. And we had, for our original Model 3, an electrician come out and install this plug here for our Model 3. Now, this will give us the fastest charge that an SR Plus was able to receive. So there was no need for a wall connector at that time. Beyond that also, if you don't want to get or pay an electrician, to install these kind of adapters for these NEMA 1450. In the mobile connector, you also do receive a regular wall outlet plug like you would charge your cell phone with. It is called trickle charging. You are not gonna get much range, maybe a few miles per hour. But if you're charging overnight, your vehicle's just sitting here, that is the easiest quote unquote free solution you can go with when charging your Tesla. Just keep in mind again, it will take forever to charge. Once again, this right here used to be included with prior year 2021 and before model Teslas. It is that extra $230 charge right now if you buy a new vehicle. Now, if you plug this in, as you can see here, it is as simple as that, and your Tesla logo does start to light up. If you can see it here, I'm not sure, but that will light up. And your end of your plug looks very similar to what that wall connector plug looks like. The black one is the wall connector plug. This is the mobile connector. And what I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and plug it in the vehicle so you guys can see exactly what charge we'll get on our 2021 Model S. So again, that silver connector, all you need to do is just plug it right into the port and it will light up and you can see it charging. Let's jump in the vehicle to show you the charging speeds. So, as you can see right here, again, you are not going to be getting much range at all. Currently, we're pulling in six kilowatts, 32 amps, 242 volts of electricity, and the time remaining to charge to 80% is five hours and 35 minutes. So, again, charging rate, six kilowatts with the wall connector. If you want, you can change this display let me go ahead and switch this over to actual miles to give you an idea. So with this, we're pulling in, let me get a little better view for you guys, 26 miles an hour with the mobile connector. 
not too bad with the NEMA 1450 adapter. So again, that is using that mobile connector that comes for $230 with any Tesla you want to order. Let's move on to the wall connector now, which I personally think, again, depending on what vehicle you have, is going to be the better option for faster charging. So again, depending on where you're gonna be parking your vehicle or using a charging solution, this is more weatherproof than that mobile connector. It is not waterproof necessarily, but it is definitely more water resistant. It is meant to be outdoors. If you so choose, you can put it on a pole, mount it on the outside of your house, whatever might be workable for you. With this, you can have power load sharing and all that if you have multiple vehicles. There is just other benefits of that aspect with this solution, as well as being able to pull in 48 to 50 amps of charge to give that vehicle a much faster charge. So again, having said that, let's go ahead and take that charger, and as you can see, it's that black top now, and plug it in and check out what we get. Again, let's just tap that charging port to open it up and plug this baby in. And now that it starts charging, we'll jump in the vehicle. I do just wanna call out one other thing right here really quick, and that is, again, how clean this looks when it is actually charging. It gives you any alerts right here. If there is an issue, if charging is not working 100%, it will display here as well. Also, you do get software updates, as crazy as that is, since it is connected via Wi-Fi for improved capabilities possibly down the road. All right, now again, hopping back in the Model S, right off the bat, you will be able to see here, we are pulling in 41 miles an hour with 48 amps at 240 volts for a full charge in three hours and 30 minutes. Now again, going back into the display and changing this back to percentage, you can see we're charging at 10 kilowatts rather than the prior slower speed with the mobile connector. So we currently have a 48% battery. Obviously all that will be impacted with how fast it charges, but that should give you a good idea. Okay, so just to recap for you guys, it really is gonna be dependent on what you're gonna be using your vehicle for, if you're gonna be traveling a lot, where you're gonna be charging it, and how much of a convenience you want. For a lot of people, I really do think the mobile connector is gonna be the best, best option. It is the most cost efficient option. It is very useful in a number of different scenarios. If you're out camping and there's not a dryer outlet or a 1450 outlet, you can use any charger again with the adapter to simply use to charge it like you would your phone or a laptop. Um, or in those scenarios where you do have the dryer outlet plugs, you can get that faster rate of charge. It's just for, you know, portability, this is what you're gonna want. If you're gonna be parking your vehicle outside, if you're gonna be charging it out in rainy conditions, hot conditions, this might be your better bet. If you're more into the look of the devices, this is obviously gonna be your better bet. But again, you're paying for the ultimate convenience of faster charging, Wi-Fi connectivity, and those other power load options that come with this. None of that's possible with the mobile connector but at double the price, is it worth it? That is something you're gonna to have to decide on depending on those use cases we described. Now, obviously what we didn't talk about here because it's not a home charging solution is the supercharger network. That is something else to keep in mind. If you do travel a lot, you are probably gonna be supercharging quite a bit and that is a whole separate beast in itself with as far as obviously charging speed and taking that 800 amps that's gonna be able to get put out on a V3 supercharger. We know V4 supercharging is coming around. Charging architecture from the Cybertruck is going to be changing as well to be able to get up to 350 kilowatts at a V4 supercharger. But for now, every vehicle in the fleet caps out at a max 350. Keep that in mind, not like any home in current modern times can take that load or dish it out to the vehicles, but just something for you guys to be aware of. That's it for this one, guys. Make sure to use our affiliate link if you decide to pick up a Tesla. It greatly helps out the channel. We, we do appreciate it. And let us know, which option did you go with? <laughs> I mean, you can just look at them side by side here and be like, okay, yeah, there's a big difference here. Thanks for watching, guys. We will catch you in the next one. Peace.